Today, we're gonna to be talking about VPN, probably one of the most oversold security items that there is, predominantly because a lot of people put way too much faith in VPNs. We're gonna talk about why VPNs don't work. We're gonna talk about situations where VPNs do work. We're gonna talk about the origin and how you can use a VPN properly. And also at the end of this, I'm gonna give you my recommendation as somebody who's actually not sponsored by a VPN, which I know is shocking. Pretty much everyone on the internet is sponsored by a VPN. But I'm gonna give you my recommendations after using probably 14 different VPNs, which two I recommend. Let's go ahead and get into VPNs. So most people trace VPNs back to Microsoft 1996, peer-to-peer -peer tunneling protocol. And basically VPNs were created for corporate use. Now, what happens with a lot of VPNs and what happens with a lot of products and services in the software industry is things will get repackaged. So VPNs was never supposed to be this super secret spy tool that a lot of people see them as now, but they got repackaged. And as you've probably seen on the internet, you see an ad for a VPN every three to four seconds. Now, with that being the case, a lot of people think VPNs make you invisible. And a lot of the companies have come up with very clever names, great marketing, and they kind of offer a lot of the same things. You can switch out your IPs, you could turn on your VPN, and just, you are now anonymous. You are now a super internet ninja. But the reality is that isn't the case. Unfortunately for a lot of people, they don't understand how VPNs work. Now, they are an encrypted tunnel between two devices, and there is a lot of value of having a VPN for the right people. But like a lot of software, they got repackaged and repurposed for retail sales. A software that was created initially for corporations, and they would do peer-to-peer -peer in corporations, corporate contact and you know files and working on projects. To have a peer-to-peer -peer encrypted tunnel made a lot of sense. Then, when VPNs really started kicking off the last decade, basically everyone in the world thinks they need a VPN. Some of the issues with VPNs, and they are actually quite a long list of some of the issues. The first one is logs. Most VPN services claim they don't keep logs. However, that has been proven to be false time and time again. And the problem with this is if you pay a company a small fee, whether it's monthly or yearly, to log your traffic, you're actually worse off than not having a VPN. This is why a lot of people say Tor is far superior to VPN. Now you can use a VPN with Tor, but we'll talk about that here in a minute as well. So buckle up, let's break down some of these issues and then what you could do to actually get the most value out of your VPN. Now if your VPN service has ever been caught logging traffic or turning traffic logs over, the, the VPN service is literally worthless. Now I'm not gonna bash on VPNs here in this video, but with a simple Google search, you could find out the vast majority of VPNs have been turning over logs to three letter agencies worldwide. And the problem with that is you're basically taking all your encrypted traffic, putting it in one place because the VPN still can see it. And then there you go. They've got a log of everything you've done everywhere you've went and they can turn that over and then you've actually paid to log your traffic. You've made things significantly worse. Another issue with VPNs is disruption in service and connectability. There are a lot of services that have blacklisted IPs from a lot of popular VPNs. And the reason is shady activities on the internet. And there are a lot of streaming services that don't even allow VPNs, which is unfortunate. And they've blacklisted a lot of their IPs. So you're changing your IP. And it, you know, I, like me, I'm here in Vegas right now. It can make it look like I'm in Amsterdam or California or you know New York or Florida or Germany, right? Your VPN is going to switch that and it's going to look like a different IP and you're going to have a secure encrypted tunnel or so you would think. Another big issue beyond performance is DNS leaking. And this is something a lot of people don't talk about, but DNS leaking. Now they've tried to combat some of this by having kill switch and double VPNs, which again, we're getting really heavy into the marketing buzz terms and the value you actually get is far less than the value that you're being sold, but they do have kill switches to try to combat some of this, but DNS leaking is a very serious issue. Now, if you've got your internet and you are at your house or your office, wherever you are, and what you do is you turn on your VPN, you've got your internet service provider, your ISP, you turn on your VPN, you go through this encrypted tunnel out to the internet, right? It's supposed to, it's supposed to encrypt the traffic. Well, the issue with that is you've got your starting point, your ISP, your ending point, your internet, and then the VPN. So with machine learning, there's a lot of algorithms that a lot of these big companies have put out. They can actually predict 
the entirety of the traffic with shocking accuracy because of the weaknesses of DNS leaking, the weaknesses of you're still starting at the same ISP and you're still ending at the same internet site. And even if they have a secure socket layer, you know, an SSL, which most sites do nowadays, you should have an SSL, it's still not encrypting uh, the entire transit. Whereas Tor, Tor is actually gonna be a lot more anonymous and you're gonna have a lot more anonymity because of the way that Tor relays and then the exit nodes, it's bounced at least three times. So with the VPN, you're not gonna have the same level of anonymity. In fact, typically not even close as Tor. Now beyond logging and DNS, you know, and, and dropping service, performance and speed can actually be another issue. Now, in all fairness, performance and speed can be an issue with Tor as well, depending upon the level of security you're using on Tor. Are you using .onion and also are you using safe, safer or safest, you know, the three levels of Tor, uh, gold, silver, and bronze, basically. Which level are you using to enable uh, you, you know, how safe are you breaking JavaScript? Are you, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of different features you can use to make sites safer and safer. But as you do that, you break a lot of websites. So VPN is basically just the, the tunnel, but everything else is the same. So all of the malicious stuff that is commonly found on the internet is still the exact same. Now, I don't want to rain on the parade of VPNs. I use VPNs and I think VPNs are a great service, but I think more than anything, a lot of them don't work because a lot of people don't understand how VPNs work and they're just sold uh, some marketing that this is a great thing and you, you've got to have one. Now, would I recommend VPNs? Yeah, for the right people, but also the right VPNs. And you've got to really be careful. In my opinion, and, and like I said, I'm not affiliated with any VPNs. This is just who I recommend. This is just being a happy customer of a couple of VPN services. You know, I have no affiliate links and I have no affiliation. So that's how you know I'm being 100% honest, I know a lot of my favorite YouTubers have, you know, this is brought to you by XYZ VPN, and I'm looking, I'm like, there's no way you believe this is a great service, but they write the biggest check. Well, for me, a, a good budget option and a good go-to option, an option that I'll have my kids use, option I'll use on devices around the house, is private internet access. I think PIA, private internet access, is a good one. They've got a lot of IPs you can connect to worldwide, great service, very affordable if you're on a budget, budget-friendly, and it's just ease of use. Once you've got it logged on, you just push that big button and it just pops on, right? It's almost like you're, you're, you're pushing the big launch button and then your VPN, you're now anonymous. So the, the user experience is, is basic, but perfect for the average person on private internet access. And their prices are compatible with all the major VPNs and the compatibility is pretty much across the board. So that's a good that's a good one I recommend. Next one I recommend is Proton VPN. I also use Proton Mail for a lot of stuff. Now, interestingly enough, I never use Proton Mail with Proton VPN. Not that I think there's a problem with that, but I just I'm always kind of trying to think ahead on, you know, compartmentalizing. The best thing you could do to be secure beyond all these tools and things we talk about is compartmentalized. That's why I compartmentalize and have multiple emails, multiple VPNs, multiple servers, multiple all the things I do because then not one thing has everything. And I think that's really, really important. Now, can these VPNs be breached? Yeah, absolutely. Could they turn over logs and data? Yeah. Now for me, I'm not a criminal. I'm not doing nefarious stuff on the internet. I'm not running my own version of Silk Road. So I really, you know, at the end of the day, it would be more of a disappointment for a service I pay for. But unfortunately, a lot of people are paying a monthly or yearly service to VPNs to track everything you do and then turn it over on a whim. And the problem you might be thinking, well, I've got, why would, why would anybody care about my traffic? The problem is nowadays everything's being packaged together. They're getting blocks of traffic and blocks of site activity. And so similar to when I talked yesterday in my crypto video, breaking down the best options to have a completely anonymous credit and debit card and using crypto and some of the things you do. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it up in the cards. But similar to how I broke that down, this is a similar thing where you might be guilty by association. And this is the problem when you have billions of, of searches at all times. A lot of people are running into guilty by association. You might've even heard somebody who somebody broke into their Wi-Fi, did some crazy stuff and the FBI showed up at their house because it made it look like you did some crazy stuff. Like it's, it's sadly not that hard to do. Your neighbor might break into your computer 
do some crazy stuff, and then the FBI shows up at your house. And so these are the things guilty by association, and you don't want your traffic to be in a block with a bunch of other people. That's why these logs are so important. Anyway, what's your favorite VPN? Do you use a VPN service? If so, which one? Was there one of the two that I said that you use or do you not like, or is there a different one that I'm completely missing the ball on that is every bit as better as PIA or ProtonMail, or maybe even better? Let me know down below. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, put out new videos here on Privacy X Project every single day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.